Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, yesterday, I made a uh, video on a fighter, I think, who has an opportunity to hit the top shelf in the sport, and that's Sergei Kovalov. Kovalov is coordinated. He hits hard in both hands. He makes adjustments during fights. He um, now is showing us an emphasis on a jab, right? He's a guy who comes in at a side profile is actually hard to hit for a slugger. But I made the argument that Kovalev, who hasn't gone past eight rounds, needs to learn how to fight on his back foot. That there is a part of the sport that front foot heavy Kovalev hasn't mastered and there are open questions about whether or not he can go 12 rounds against a guy who could try to force him on his back foot and maybe expose a part of his game that isn't as good as the game we see fight after fight. Right? It's like looking at an NFL quarterback and wondering how would this guy operate outside of the pocket? What happens if he can go up against a pass rush that's going to force him to move more than he wants. Some quarterbacks in situations like that fall apart. Some boxers in situations like that fall apart. So then I started looking through some old fights and just thinking it through after I made the video. And the video has gotten multiple negative votes. I see four people as I made this follow-up video have expressed disapproval at that video. I understand right now Kovalev is unbeaten and on top of the world. Right? I'm not here to dispute his talent. People should know I've taken Kovalev in some big fights that weren't clear at the time. But, let me say this. Think about one of the biggest fights of our era. Keeping in mind that sometimes it's not the hype that makes the fight. Sometimes when the fight happens, you don't even realize that it was one of the biggest fights of our era. But as you look back on boxing and as you see what the fighters did following the fight, you then realize that the fight, which may have made money, which may not have made money, was in a boxing sense one of the biggest. I want you to think back with me to Bernard Hopkins against Joe Calzaghe. Now let me point out that if I were to come up with a short list of the very best boxers in the history of 168 pounds, unbeaten Joe Calzaghe would necessarily have to be on that list. Right? I would argue that at a minimum, Joe Calzaghe probably had the fastest hands at 168 pounds that I know of. And keep in mind, 168 is a little bit different than welter and middle and light heavy. This is a relatively new division. Look up the history of the division here online. And understand in a short history, few have dominated the division, like Joe Calzaghe. Right now, he fought Hopkins in a different way, 175, and I would argue, quite frankly, that Bernard Hopkins, who already is one of the giants in the history of the sport of middleweight, is in a second career, making himself one of the giants in the sport at light heavy. Now, I understand light heavy has some huge names, right? Um, Bob Foster comes to mind, right? Anyone who studies the history of Ezra Charles understands that the former 
heavyweight champion was probably at his best at light heavy. But take a look at Hopkins's volume of work. Well, the point is, as you look back, my cat's up early here in the background. As you look back at the Hopkins Calzaghe fight, a fight between two Hall of Famers, a fight between blistering hand speed from a southpaw stance. Right, understand, Calzaghe's complicated not just by the hand speed, but also by the southpaw stance. Right, think about it. And he's fighting an older Hopkins who can't match him in hand speed. But yet, as you watch the fight, that fight's such a competitive fight that officially Calzaghe won that fight by split decision. Right? Understand Hopkins, who isn't trying to match Calzaghe in hand speed, and who isn't on his front foot, backed up often against the ropes, scores the one knockdown in that fight. Right? Now, just like the Lennox Lewis, Vitaly Klitschko fight, the Hopkins Calzaghe fight really wasn't that well pubbed when the fight took place, right? Calzaghe crossed the Atlantic to come to the United States and hadn't fought on this side of the water much before the fight. But the fight is a classic. It's a clash of styles. Calzaghe was front foot heavy. He's a guy who overwhelmed fighters. Look at the Peter Manfredo fight. He got guys backed up against the ropes, dealing with absurd volume. And here he is against a master technician who defensively knew how to dampen another fighter's volume and defensively knew how to get that fighter to walk into his punches. The skill set that Bernard Hopkins shows in that fight, and let me just say, I scored the fight for Calzaghe. I thought Calzaghe won the fight, right? But the skill set that Bernard Hopkins shows in that fight against, in my opinion, a much more complicated opponent than Felix Trinidad is exactly the skill set that I believe Sergei Kovalev needs to master to be a great fighter. Okay, he has the front foot part down. Now we need the back foot part. Okay, now we need the ability to set the kind of traps that Calzaghe walked into and got hit with power punches on. Right? It's that skill set that Kovalev needs to figure out. When you're not on your front foot, when you don't have the hand speed advantage, when you're able to fight a guy and literally emphasize defense, when you're not running, you're engaging, but yet you're winning rounds. If you want to figure out the greatness of Bernard Hopkins, and he is one of the dominant fighters, in my opinion, in the sports history, right? The Calzaghe fight is a shining moment. And Joe Calzaghe's entire career, his unbeaten career, where he fights people like Chris Eubank, right? Unbeaten Mikhail Kessler. Understand, this Hopkins fight, in my opinion, is the toughest fight Calzaghe had. Keep in mind, too, for those of you who believe Calzaghe fought no one, he fought Sakio Bika. Right? Bika, by the way, has a share of the belt right now. Right? Roy Jones, ironically, still winning fights. Calzaghe's last fight, he fights Roy Jones. After getting dropped on really a forearm shot, take a look at it on film, understand he gets up, he has Jones up on the ropes, and Jones, simply put, 
never had Bernard Hopkins' skills on his back foot. Right, look at Jones against Kalzaki. Look at Jones against Danny Green. Dare I say we've never seen, I mean never, underline, seen Bernard Hopkins back up against the ropes looking as bad as Roy Jones. Right, about as bad as it got for it. Bernard Hopkins backing up is against Sean Pascal, where Pascal knocks him down. Look at the first fight. Pascal had big moments. But just to understand, against Calzaghe, on his back foot, Bernard Hopkins wins several rounds. Right? Even though I thought Calzaghe won the fight, that's a close fight, folks. Okay? Let me also make another point about that hopkins Kalzagi fight, right? Understand, if you look at the CompuBox numbers, right, understand that Hopkins throws less than 500 punches. To put it in perspective, Timothy Bradley against Danny Pacquiao throws more than 300 more punches than Hopkins throws against Kalzagi. Now, it might shock some people to know that Calzaghe only threw 707 punches in the fight. That by itself should be a tip-off to the mastery of Bernard Hopkins on his back foot. Because Calzaghe is a guy who could rev it. Right? Who could rev it up to 80, 90, 100 punches in a round. Here, over 12 rounds, Calzaghe is limited to 707 punches. Now, as you think about CompuBox and understand, Calzaghe lands almost 100 more punches than Hopkins in that fight. Just understand that CompuBox is not the be-all and end-all. Just like the Hopkins-Calzaghe fight is close. Right? You look at the CompuBox numbers, you see one guy has an almost 100 punch advantage, landed. But yet as you watch the fight, you're thinking this fight is close. So too was Pacquiao Bradley. Right? Understand, you don't have to land the same number of punches as your opponent to actually win the fight right understand too some people will have big rounds but yet only win those rounds by 10-9 those rounds could skew a CompuBox total output also CompuBox measures the number of punches not the intensity of the shots right so my point is simply again for those of you looking at Pacquiao Bradley, and let me point out, depending on what happens going forward, the Pacquiao Bradley first fight might be one of the big moments in boxing in recent memory. Right again, it's not the hype or the expectation before the fight. It's the importance of the fight as the future rolls out. Right, but just understand the copy box numbers for Pacquiao Bradley, and by the way, those numbers show Bradley throwing more punches than Pacquiao, don't negate the fact that either guy could have won that fight. Right, so as we think back to Hopkins' back foot game against Joe Calzaghe. And as we realize that Hopkins is still active in the same division as Sergei Kovalev, and as you further realize that dangerous fighters like Andre Ward at 168, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. at 168 are lurking out there, both of whom can fight inside. Think Andre Ward, Allen Green, Think Chavez Jr. against Sebastian Zvik. Right? All I'm saying is that Kovalev is going to have to develop <coughs> other parts <coughs> of his game. Let me also point out, too, 
He's fighting a guy who is standing right in front of him. In Cedric Agnew. He's able to load up on the left hand. That's very different, isn't it? Than fighting Adonis Stevenson. Right now, all I can say is Adonis Stevenson's left hand is one of the hardest punches in boxing. He has major power with that left hand. Right? I view Stevenson as predominantly one handed. But his left hand is as tough as anything Kovalev throws. Right? Stevenson hits harder than Cedric Agnew. You can do things against Cedric Agnew that you can't do against Stevenson because if you get sloppy against Stevenson, you're going to get dropped. Right? That's the first thing. There's a power punching discrepancy between Agnew, the guy Kovalev just beat, and Adonis Stevenson. The other problem is Stevenson's mobile. Right? Stevenson's not standing in front of you getting hit with left hook after left hook. That's not who he is. Right? One of the problems with fighting Stevenson is being able to deal with Stevenson's movement. Look at the beginning, and there's not much after that, of Stevenson against Chad Dawson. Dawson's a guy with a great jab. Dawson's in there looking at Stevenson, and Stevenson's bouncing around the ring. It's not a long fight, folks. This will take two minutes of your time. Stevenson's bouncing around the ring. Right? Half the challenge of fighting Stevenson is finding Stevenson. Right? Joe Lewis said he can run, but he can't hide. But understand, mobile fighters make it hard for you to find them in the ring. Maybe they're not hiding, but you still got to go looking for them. Right? So Kovalev against Stevenson is going to be dealing with a guy jogging around the ring. That's a cause for concern. Right? The other issue, of course, is if you can stay away from Kovalev, what's up with Kovalev's stamina? If Stevenson ever signs to fight Kovalev, we'll make a video on that fight. I do have a strong opinion on who I think wins that fight. I'm not going to reveal it here. But what I will say is, just like Stevenson would try to beat him from the outside in, understand Chavez Jr. and Ward could try to beat Kovalev from the inside out. Right? Mid-range hookers, you know, the eye of a tornado is actually calm, right? There's a lot of damage. You know, I'm throwing hooks and stuff. There's a lot of damage if you're in the wind tunnel. I mean, if you're in the middle of the wind, there's a lot of damage. Inside the wind tunnel, it's calm. As I've said before, Chavez Jr. has problems. There is a weight problem. Kovalev hits hard for a light heavy. Chavez Jr. really, um, you know, ate his meals in middleweight. But if the punch carries the light heavy, I'm not sure if Chavez Jr., if he gets close to Kovalev and isn't dealing with the kind of movement that he had to deal with against Sergio Martinez, I'm not sure if he isn't able to not just hurt Kovalev inside, but win a lot of the rounds, just like he did against Sebastian Zvik. So, as we look at Kovalev, just like we look at Vladimir Klitschko. Understand Kovalev is a work in progress. Right? Vladimir Klitschko had some slip-ups early in his career. Didn't he? Right? Vladimir Klitschko today doesn't really throw punches to the body. Vladimir Klitschko today when you get inside he hugs you like he hugged Alexander Povetkin. But yet Vladimir Klitschko has been champion for years. Right? He's learning the sport with the belt around his waist. 
That's Sergei Kovalev. Right, a fight against Bernard Hopkins, I used to think it'd be a Kovalev blowout. Now looking at Kovalev, I think that fight would be interesting. Right, because of Hopkins' back foot game and defense. Anyway, let me hear from you. Let me also say too, Timothy Bradley, Manny Pacquiao. I cannot believe the comments being made about Timothy Bradley. It's startling. Right? All I can say is understand, again, sometimes things look clear looking back. More clear than they do in the moment. I'm here to tell you, after Hagler lost to Vito Artifermo, this was after Hagler, uh, Hagler, I believe, had lost to Bobby Bungaloo Watts or some name like that. There are questions about more than Hagler. Right, this was in real time at the moment. Right, if you go back and if you look at the Vito Altaferbo fight, Hagler clearly wins that fight. Hagler went to the UK, fought Alan Minter, <laughs> beats Minter. The crowd was so upset, they viewed it as such an injustice that they started throwing shoes in the ring. I'm not kidding. Hagler, a fighter, needed protection to get out of the ring. Right? This is a guy who, quite frankly, goes on to dominate the middleweight division. Right? At the time, we didn't know who he was. Right? That's how boxing is. As you look back at the biggest fights of the last 40 years, one man's opinion. Lewis Klitschko, huge. Calzaghi Hopkins, huge. Forget the pre-fight buildup. Just look back on these fights, right? How do you dampen Calzaghi's speed? Get the only knockdown in the fight. Go the distance with him while throwing less than 500 punches in the fight. It's on film, folks. Let me tend to this cat. Thanks for stopping by. Let me hear your thoughts. Peace.